sand. It was everywhere. And it was hot. And when NASA invaded Brown's range, chaos reigned as racks, equipment, boxes, cables were dumped outside the buildings to be dragged inside the hot, airless buildings as the air conditioning was still being installed. In the beginning, I had to fill in time, first as a telephonist answering the three-line switch. Then I became the station draftsman, drawing up floor plans for the equipment and fittings, and laying cables before my timing and voice receiver systems arrived. During that period, I had the time to wander around taking these movies. This is the AK-8 antenna parts with the temporary Nissan hut behind. Here we see Basil Byrne from Telemetry and a storeman unpack the prefabricated cables and drag them into the TNC building. I remember installing the underground cables to the Q6, the searing heat from the sun above and the red sand under me with scorpions for company. At the Q6, the building and antenna foundations were quite complete, waiting for the pedestal and 9 metre dish. This is looking towards the TNC building. The 9 metre dish waiting for the crane, which duly arrived, to plant it on its pedestal. Here's the finished Q6. A close-up of the FPQ6 boresight antenna and looking down at the Q6 site from the top of the tower. The telemetry and control or TNC building and the temporary Nissan hut. This is the powerhouse in the foreground with the command and voice transmitter site beyond. And here's the command transmitter trailer arriving from Fremantle. This is the range and range rate site with the VHF antenna ready for installation. One of the equipment trailers. The crane hoists one of the two S-band dish antennas into place. You can just see it moving up.
and the boxes and stuff keeps coming. The finished TNC building from the air. And here are the finished arcade antennas behind the TNC building. The official opening day was held on the 25th of June 1964. It was quite a good crowd and even a parking problem with a number of cars that turned up. The Minister for Supply, Alan Fairhill speaking. The Director of Tracking from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Centre, Ed Buckley, addresses the audience. The official party adjourned to Monte Sala's Gemini Fountain, led by Mr. Ed Buckley. Monte Sala, the fountain's designer, enjoys a well-earned cigar. Vic Schwartz, a NASA installation engineer, his job almost over, also enjoys it. In action, from this launch pad by the Carnarvon Racecourse, WRE launched their HAD rocket for the station to try their tracking skills. And as the dust settles, thank you for watching these odd shots.